Hello, I'm Paul Wells, and this is chapter 12 of the story of Plug and Plink. Links to the previous chapters down in the description. In this video, we are going to set up this snake all the way through to sending notes over the internet. And the first thing we need is we need the app, and you can get the app from the App Store or the Play Store, or what's easier, there's a QR code on the back of the box. If you just scan that, then it'll take you straight to the right place to install. So here we are at the Play Store, and well, I've searched for it before, obviously, so that's why it's come up. Plug and Plink, Plug and Plink, there it is. And click to install, open. Let's open the app. Uh, a little message comes up just to say, uh, do you allow Plug and Plink to access the device's location? That is true of any app which uses Bluetooth. So we have to allow it anyway. So while using the app, the second question is, uh, will you allow Plug and Plink to access your photos? Uh, the reason it's asking this is because in the help system, we allow you to take photographs. And in order to attach those photographs to the chat, um, then the app needs access to your phone. Next, we see the onboarding screen. This is just a one-time screen to say, hey, in order to use this app, you're going to need a snake. Um, you're going to need a, a digital piano. It doesn't actually need, even need to be a digital piano. There is a, a way of using Plug and Plink with an acoustic piano, provided there's a digital piano at the other end. And this phone needs to be connected to the internet. So I'm going to click the box there to say I've, I've understood that and I don't need to see that message again. From the home screen, you would normally make an account first. I'm going to take it as far as it can go without an account and then I'll quickly create an account later on in the video. So clicking setup, begin with step number one, which is about positioning the snake. And it's possible to have the snake's head on the left or have the snake's head on the right. All that does is change the mapping of notes to the lights. I'm gonna keep it on the left and click continue. The next thing is it's telling me that I can bend the snake's neck. So if you look at the belly of the snake, you can see the shape matches the keyboard. So I can rest her down like that on the back of the keyboard and her neck can bend so that her head is not obscuring these keys here. That's the snake in position, so we click finish. And next we're on step two. And here it's asking, do you have a piano which generates its own sound, or do you have a piano which just has USB and you plug it into a computer? I'm going to be adding a third option here, which is for acoustic pianos as well. But for now, this piano is a piano which has its own sound generator and we need to give it some power. So that's now plugged in. Then plug the other end of the USB cable into the snake's tongue. And we can use either of the snake's tongue cables. And check that the snake's nostril lights come on. And those lights mean she's got power. And so we need this cable, the USB cable. And on this piano, the USB port is here. And the other end of the USB cable plugs into the spare side of the snake's tongue. Right, now we're ready for option three, which is the Bluetooth. And if you click this button here, connect, then you'll notice that the snake's lights have both gone green and that means it's connected. And we can click continue. And now we can run a little test that Bluetooth is working correctly. So when I press this test button here, it will run some lights along the snake's back, which it does. Next, it's step four. Step four is to check that the firmware on the snake is up to date 
and this message here is telling me that it's one version out of date so if I click that button there it downloads the firmware and then these pink and blue flashing lights here indicate that a new version of the firmware is being installed on the snake okay now that's the firmware updated so we can proceed to step five step five is saying we do not have a piano connected which is correct even though it's plugged in the piano is not switched on now the piano is switched on the snake has detected it and the app knows there's a piano there so we're now in test mode this is a mode where when I play a key on the piano the snake will simply put a light on corresponding to the key so let's see what happens when I play a key well a light comes on so that does mean that the snake can recognize the MIDI output from the piano the only problem is it's off by one octave so we need to correct that and the easiest way to do that on this piano is to transpose the piano down an octave and now the lights that come on are correctly corresponding with the keys that I play so next we can check that the app can play the piano and we simply do that by pressing this button here which says play my piano I've definitely heard that tune somewhere before ready two three when we learn from a fall it's easier than you'd think piano link plug and blink plug and blink <laughs> I'll admit this project's a lot of fun at times that's the end of setting up the piano um, next we're ready for step six which is a full test well you will recall at the start of this video I said that I was going to need an account so we've reached that point now so if I try to use step six without being logged in it simply says yeah it's found an internet connection but then when I try to record something, it says, you must be logged in. So let's just go out and quickly do that. So I go up to account. Creating an account possibly isn't the most exciting part of the video. But I will just quickly show you anyway. Log in. and I'm now logged in so now I am logged in I can go back to the setup back to step six yes I'm connected to the internet and let me just explain what's happening here so similar to video conferencing software which typically has a mode whereby you can make a recording of video and audio and then they will be played back to you to check that all your equipment is configured correctly. Plug and Plink has the same facility here and it allows you to record some MIDI notes, send them over to the server via the internet. The server will record what you play and then will send it back. And if that test succeeds, then that means you have everything set up correctly from your end, ready to share your piano with somebody else. Okay, so let's make a little test recording. I'll just play something simple so that it's easy to see the lights. Record. And just wait for the recording to time out. Now it's starting playback. Okay, so that was an end-to-end -end test and that was successful. Well, that concludes 
chapter 12 on the story of Plug and Plink. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed seeing the app for the first time and seeing the system in action. If you would like to make any comments on the app, if you think there are any features that need to be improved or whatever, please do let me know. There's a very good chance I'll be able to incorporate any ideas that you have. I'd also like to know if anyone would like to beta test Plug and Plink. Uh, we have some snakes ready to go. And particularly if you are a piano teacher and you are able to actually try out some piano lessons, that would be fantastic. And I'd um, very much like to get the snakes out there and working now. Um, the other thing is I'm going to need marketing quite soon. And I've done a little bit of marketing myself, but I'd really like to hear from anybody who is either a marketing specialist or knows anybody who uh, might be interested in helping with the marketing of this product. Um, please do get in touch with me. Okay, thanks very much for watching. See you again next week.